Now, Rich Porter, at what age did you actually get to know him initially? Uh, I think I met Rich maybe when he was like 13, 14. I think he lived, he lived on Convent and I lived on St. Nicholas. It's like one block apart, same block, 146. He lived on 146 in Convent and I lived on St. Nicholas. Okay, now Rich Porter actually started selling initially heroin at age 12. So that was like around 1977. So by the time you met him, was he already selling drugs? Um, not, not really. He was not really. I, I known him selling newspapers. You know, uh, anything to try to stay afloat and shit. And he, I known him to sell. As the first thing I know him to sell was was uh, sage and eggs. He would cook up the sage and eggs, and it smells like hash, and he would sell it to the white boys coming out of Jersey as hash and they would buy it. You feel me? But it was Sage and Avon. He, he did that until I think he got with a, with a cat named Ellison and him and Ellison started selling, I believe, heroin. And I think he stamped his, his heroin bags was called Much Better. And he started making money doing that. Okay, so you're growing up in Harlem, you're going to high school, but then in the ninth grade, you end up dropping out. Yes, sir. I dropped out in the was ninth there a, grade. Was there a reason why you dropped out? To make ends meet, man. Being honest, being honest, the reason why I dropped out because I was working in the cleaners, right? I started working in the cleaners. And um, I felt if I work full time, I'll make more money and shit. You feel me? But, it, but my salary never changed. I still got $75 a week. And that's all I ever made in that cleaners was $75 a week. You understand? And uh, even though I used to get tips when I delivered clothes and, you know, certain things like that. But uh, that's the reason why I dropped out, being honest, to try to help make ends meet, bro. Okay. So you're working at the cleaners. And the owner of the cleaners was actually an ex-drug dealer himself, right? He wasn't a drug dealer. He was a, a number writer. Okay. He used to, you know, take numbers and shit. You feel me? And uh, all the all the number bankers used to come in there every Saturday morning and drop their numbers off to him. He was like a banker. Uh, him and this guy named Jun Junior. He used to live. He used to live in the Barry Building too. These was number bankers. You feel me? And that's what that's what the cleaners was at first. It was like a front. It wasn't really supposed to be a cleaners, but uh, it eventually you know started picking up. Man. The business started picking up doing cleaning stuff, so it became a cleaners. Yes. Okay, so you're working the cleaners, and at this point, you're 100 percent legit. You're just doing your your nine to five job, getting your your little money. Good kid, good uh, kid, good kid, good, good kid. a good kid, uh, helping your mom out with with rent money. That's it. And, that's and so all. forth. Yes, sir. We're now in terms of your age, your your brothers and sisters were they older, younger? Were you in the middle? Or? Uh, my sisters. Three sisters is older than me, and my brother, my oldest brother, was older than me. So I feel I'm the I was the middle kid, because I got a younger sister, two younger sisters, and a younger brother. So I was in the middle, definitely. Okay, and by this point, were any of your siblings dabbling in the streets at all? Not at all. My Not sisters, all. my sisters, maybe was messing with guys from the streets. You know, two of them, to my knowledge. They was messing with guys in the street, but they wasn't doing anything illegal themselves. Nobody. Okay, so here you are working at the cleaners, doing the straight and narrow thing. But Rich is already starting to to really ramp up in his, you know, in terms of his street activities. Yes, sir. And by 1981, by right around 15, 16 years old, Rich's first car was a BMW. BMW black on black 528E. Mm. Black and white lamb seats, block punk system. Yes. But uh, before that, LA, his man, LA, because I mean, LA hooked up. LA was like the first, first young dude in our generation that I seen with a brand new car. It was a Saab 900 Turbo, rimmed out system. I mean, LA had to be about 15, 16 years old. And this is how you pulling up in the streets, bro. 
Okay, so you have these these kids who are, you know, sophomore juniors in high school, if they're even going to school, pulling up in what the equivalent today is like fifty, sixty thousand dollar cars. Foreign cars, yes, sir. Back then. Okay. And how did that affect you? Like seeing seeing your friend pulling up on a car like this? Wow. I remember I'll never forget the day. I'll never forget the day uh we was playing two hand touch football. Like the crew, my crew from the block is like, you know, who I grew up with, like in the block, you know, the ones that was trying to go to straight and narrow and shit, like Stan, uh, Winnie, Fats, uh, Sterl. We used to play two and my brother Kev, we used to play two and touch football in the block all the time. And I'll never forget the date. Rich, LA, uh, a cat named Duop, Craig O, uh, John John, they all flying through in foreign cars, Volvos. BMs, Audi, back to back. And we had to like jump back out the streets because they almost hit us. And I'm like, wow, bro. Wow, I think we playing the wrong game. We think we playing the wrong game. These young boys got foreign cars. Fuck they doing? Systems in that joint? That looked at crazy, dog. And I don't think we played football no more after that, bro. Mm. Everybody went home and said, hey, we got to put a plan together. You know what I mean? Facts. Okay, and... Was it around that time that Rich was uh, having you hold some drugs and guns and so forth? Rich, Rich used to come to the cleaners and drop off clothes, and I used to get my clothes done when I for free. So I know Jimmy knew it was in my clothes, whatever. But I used to pretend that it was my clothes, and I would get his clothes for free, and he, you know, cleaned for free, and uh. He would give me some money. This is how we, you know, became cool. And uh, I used to do this on the regular form, and we became tight. And he was like, yo, I need you to hold this for me, bro. I need you to hold that for me, certain things. It might be drugs sometime. And, you know, one time it definitely was a gun. And uh, I used to hold it in the cleaners, stash it somewhere in there. Yes, that's facts. Okay. So you were doing that for him, but you weren't actually dabbling yourself at that no, point. No, I wasn't. I wasn't doing anything, bro. I was just okay. just holding it for him at that point. 